book uh, is to be given by Miss Lena Howlett from the University of York in the United Kingdom. And their research is based on turbulence in confinement transition with novel diverter configurations. So hi everyone. I study um, experimental turbulence data in the LH transition to improve our understanding of the microscopic physics and the macroscopic dependencies of the transition. One goal of fusion research is to be able to build a power plant which has much higher energy output than is needed to start and run the reactor. And tokamaks have a number of different confinement regimes which have different characteristic profiles of plasma parameters. For reactor operation, the high confinement H mode is preferred. In H mode, the plasma edge builds up a pedestal, as we can see on the right, so that the core pressure is much higher than during L mode. Higher pressure results in higher fusion power, bringing us closer to our goal. Though the plasma is mostly confined by the magnetic field, some losses do occur through cross-field radial transport. In H mode, this radial transport is suppressed, leading to a steep rise in density and a characteristic drop in the alpha emission, which is typically strongest in the edge. Though we know that the transition into H mode requires a certain net power threshold, many parameter dependencies of this threshold are not well understood. Empirical scaling laws, like these solid lines on the plot, um, do not match the behavior well in all parameter ranges, and we cannot generally predict the power thresholds for new machines or scenarios. One of the less well-studied dependencies is the diverted geometry. Experiments such as these on CMOD compare power threshold versus density plots for a vertical um, diverter and a slot diverter configuration, with the results showing a significant reduction in the power threshold for the slot diverter. The new mass u tokamak with its extensive diverter capabilities... Oh, oh God, sorry. <laughs> Hang on. I will... Here again. Um, the new Mastu Tokamak with its extensive diverter capabilities allows us to investigate this in much more detail. Um, and the extended legs of the SuperX diverter um, could reveal an even stronger uh, change in the power threshold than we see with the slot diverter, for example. Um, Mastu has successfully performed its first plasma, and we have experiments with this focus planned in the new year. In advance of these experiments, I have studied shots on mass to reduce the net power versus density plot for L and H modes. Though the H modes are not real power thresholds since the transition was induced by dropping the height of the magnetic axis, we can already assign the two regimes into different regions of the plot. In the terms of the microscopic physics, the cross field transport mentioned earlier is dominated by nonlinear fluctuations of the plasma parameters called turbulence. Elmo plasmas have high levels of turbulence, and in H mode, this turbulence is suppressed. The turbulence can be seen here in data from diagnostics such as DBS and BES. In the build-up to the transition, the turbulence is found in the predator-prey relationship with radially sheared E cross B flows called zonal flows until the threshold is passed and the turbulence is suppressed in H mode. Before the transition, energy is transferred from the turbulence into the zonal flows, and this nonlinear energy transfer is an important measure for understanding the transition. Microscopic changes can be seen in this interaction. For example, in experiments in CMUD, we're favorable with the iron grad B, point, uh, iron grad B drift pointing away uh, towards the X point and unfavorable where it points, points away from the X point. Um, geometries were compared in their transition power thresholds. The nonlinear energy transfer weight um, into, oh, this happened again, sorry. Um, into zonal flows versus net power uh, for these two cases, follow different trend lines, um, but the transition into H mode occurs at the same transfer rate, as we see in this line. The large differences in net power when the transition occurs has led to them being known as favorable and unfavorable geometries. Um, I work with data from the beam emission spectroscopy seen on the left here, um, which utilizes the emission from excited neutral beam particles to localize density fluctuations to a 2D array with high time resolution. We can set uh, the V radius such that the um, BS array will cross the separatrix and study the density fluctuations moving up along the edge of the last closed block surface. Um, we can then determine the velocities of these fluctuations by, cr by using cross correlation time delay estimation, where we shift the fluctuation data of the channels in a column with regards to the reference channel, cross correlate this data, and then plot the time delay versus the channel separation. Um, uh, since 
a, a typical result, sorry, will look like this um, with the, for the noticeable velocity shift between L and H mode, um, strongest seen in, uh, best seen in the edge, which is the region we're most interested in. Since the confined plasma, generally the turbulence is lower, so our traces are, are lower, and the scope of layer is dominated by uh, filaments. Uh, so we can see stable uh, velocities, but often we see some, some modes in the H mode up, up until the transition. Um, sometimes a very strong mode just before the transition, which precedes the D-alpha flash. Sometimes these modes uh, overwhelm the data, um, such as seen here, where we can see um, the modes present in the BES and the, and the magnetics data, uh, strongly suggesting that they might be MHD in nature, and the fluctuations are simultaneous in all channels. Um, and we can try to filter these out, um, especially well if the channels are aligned with the flux surface as we have in the double null configurations by t uh, removing the column average um, from the data and then retrying the well symmetry to return the velocities we are actually interested in. Um, and for the nonlinear um, analysis of my, of my data, I've started creating bicoherence spectra here on the left for different time windows, which can reveal information on frequency coupling between modes which I aim to expand this um, to more bispectral, uh, more sophisticated bispectral analysis, um, which will then allow me, allow me to investigate energy transfer. I'm collating the velocity results of several shots, identifying features in common and differences between them, and how they relate to the shot parameters. I'm also working on tying this in with energy transfer through analysis of bispectral. This work will continue with qualitative and quantitative analysis of the coupling and energy transfer taking place in edge plasmas during the transition. And expanding this work to study different diverter geometries will hopefully improve our understanding of the LH transition. Oh, oh it stopped. <laughs> I don't know what went wrong with my slides, I'm sorry. This should have been the end. All right. Uh, thank you very much, Lula. Uh, quite an interesting talk again. Thanks a lot. Uh